Hi everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial, we're going to address how transition metals form ions and why it is that they don't follow the octet rule. So if you recall, at the start of the chapter I'd mentioned that most elements follow the octet rule and we clarified that hydrogen and lithium and beryllium and boron don't because again they only prefer two valence electrons for reasons we've already discussed. And we also sort of vaguely pointed to the fact that transition metals also do not follow the octet rule. And so the reasons behind that are still a little bit more complex and we'll actually deal with them closer towards the end of the year when we discuss electron configurations. But the thing to note here is that when we consider transition metals, what makes them so tricky to deal with is that they tend to form ions of more than one charge. So if you take a look here, chromium forms either chromium 2 plus cation or chromium 3 plus cation. Manganese also forms 2 plus or 3 plus. If we look down here, gold can form either 3 plus or just a plus cation. And so that makes them trickier to deal with. Also note that even though the majority of main group elements do form only a single ion, that's not necessarily the case down here when we consider tin and lead and bismuth, they also tend to behave like transition metals in that they form more than one possible ion. And so the first thing that we need to do is understand, well, when we actually create names for these compounds, how are we going to tell the difference between the ions of the same element? So for example, if I have a compound of copper, how will I know if I have copper with only one plus or copper with a two plus charge? And the way that we do that is we actually still name the cation using the element name, as you see here, for example, bismuth. But what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate a Roman numeral that will actually tell us the charge of the cation. So, for example, if I have bismuth 3 plus, well, I'm going to include a Roman numeral 3 next to the name bismuth so that I am aware that bismuth is in its 3 plus charge state. If I have bismuth 5 plus, then I'm going to use a Roman numeral 5 to indicate that bismuth is in its 5 plus charge state. And so let's actually incorporate that in some formula writing and some naming of compounds based on the formula. So say, for example, that I want to write a formula for tin 4 chloride. Well, as we just saw, if I have a transition metal cation, then I'm going to use the abbreviation for tin. Tin is abbreviated SN in the periodic table, and I have a Roman numeral 4. So that means that it's in its 4 plus charge state. And then chloride ion, if you recall, is here in group 17 in the periodic table. We've already established that those elements that are in group 17 like to gain one valence electron and so for that reason the chloride ion has a minus one charge. So this would be tin 4 plus and chloride minus. And we're still going to follow the same rules that we've been following. Essentially I'm going to take the number that represents the charge of the tin and I'm going to cross it over so that it is the subscript for the chlorine in the formula for my compound. Chloride has a charge of one understood negative. And so I'm going to take that one understood and make it the subscript for the tin so that when I put the formula together it should be SnCl4. Okay, let's try another one. I have iron 3 oxide. So iron is Fe in the periodic table. Since I have a Roman numeral 3 here, that means that iron is in its 3 plus charge state. If I remind myself of the oxide ion and what charge it should have, again it's in group 16, so it has 6 valence electrons. In order to obtain 8 valence electrons, it must gain 2 electrons, and so that gives me 2 negative charges. So the oxide ion has the charge 2 minus. Now I'm at the stage where I'm going to cross over my charges to create my subscripts, and that would give me Fe2 
O3. Okay, one more. I have copper 1. So copper in the periodic table is Cu. The Roman numeral 1 means that it has a plus 1 charge state. Sulfide is, or I should say sulfur, is in group 16 in the periodic table, so it informs the sulfide ion. Since it has six valence electrons, then in order to get eight valence electrons, it's going to gain two electrons or gain two negative charges. And so the formula for sulfide ion is S2 minus. And again, I'm going to cross over my charges. And my final formula should be Cu2S for copper one sulfide. Okay, now let's work this the other way around. Now I'm going to look at a formula, and then I'm going to write the name of the compound. Now this is a little trickier because that means I'm going to have to use the formula itself to try and figure out what should be the charge state if I have a transition metal ion. So for example, I have Mn, that's going to be my cation, and I have O, that's going to be my anion. So I have an oxygen anion, and again, remembering back from the previous example we did, basically the oxygen anion has a 2 minus charge. But if you take a look at the formula, there was no subscript 2 next to the manganese. And so what that means is, that must mean that if I have a 1 understood here, and the formula says for the oxide ion that it should have a 2 minus charge, then manganese should have had a 2 plus charge. Because if I were to cross over these charges, then I would have gotten MN2O2. And if you remember from our previous pre-lecture tutorial, where when I have a common factor within my subscripts, I can reduce it out. So that would reduce out to MNO. So that leads me to believe that the charge state for the manganese is 2 plus. And so I would go and I would write this name as manganese. And so since manganese is in its 2 plus charge state, I would write manganese 2. And the name of this anion is the oxide anion. So this is manganese 2 oxide. Okay, let's work on the next one. This one, I'm going to uncross my charges so that I can tell what my charge states are for each ion. So that would mean I had Cr3 plus and S2 minus. If I'm going to name this cation, that would be chromium. I'd have to tell its charge state since it's a transition metal. And so that means that I would call this chromium Roman numeral 3, since chromium is in its 3 plus charge state. And the name of this ion is the monoatomic ion from sulfur, or sulfide. Okay, let's do this last one. So then here I have Ni, which is nickel, and then I have N, which is the nitrogen atom, so I have to figure out what ion the nitrogen atom would form. And so the nitrogen atom would be in group 15 of the periodic table, which means there are five valence electrons. It has to gain three more electrons to get its octet of valence electrons. So that means if I'm going to gain three electrons, I'm going to have three negative charges. And so if that's the case, that means that the charge state for the nitrogen ion would be 3 minus. Since there is no subscript 3 next to the nickel and also no subscript anywhere near the nitrogen, that must mean that the factor of 3 in nitrogen's charge must have factored out and this must have been nickel in its 3 plus charge state. And so now that I know that I can just go ahead and name the compound. This would be nickel and since nickel is in its 3 plus charge state, it would be nickel 3. And then the name of the ion form from the nitrogen atom would be nitride. So that means the name of this compound is nickel 3 nitride. 
So complete the follow-up assignment. There are a few of these that you can do on your own. Again, if you have any questions, email or speak to me in class, and I will see you guys next time.